Greetings fellow nerds welcome to the void. How the fuck are you, in this video lead, will be extracted and purified from Lee car battery. Yeah! I originally wanted to acquire adequately purified lead to attempt an LK99 synthesis. If you haven't heard of LK99 congratulations, you are oblivious enough of online science discourse that you might actually have a chance of making it into heaven. Basically, some nerds made a shitty and easy to make compound that they claimed was a room temperature superconductor. All the other nerds in the world simultaneously shit their pants at once, because that's more than just a sort of big claim. That's literally the unobtainium from Avatar The Last Airblender. The stuff that conducts angry pixels with actually zero losses whatsoever. The stuff that is a perfect eye magnet and levitates over magnetic fields. Granted there are already regular superconductors that can do all of these things. But those only operate at such crazy low temperatures it makes Antarctica look like a beachside jet away destination. So the implications of a room temperature one are massive. So they all got to work to test that massive claim. There were many replication attempts and a few interesting results. But basically all the data concludes that the exact compound the original paper describes Copper substituted lead oxyapatite is not a superconductor, which sounds like a major letdown. However, I already started filming this video by the time I was sure that the stuff was a dud, so I will still extract and purify the lead, because it might be interesting, but I don't know what to do with all this lead. Let me know in the comments if there's something interesting I can make with it, and maybe I'll do that for a future video. No, I will not turn it all into lead stifnet. I want to stay alive for now. Thank you very much. Maybe I should go ahead and make LK99. Just for shits and giggles. Sounds like a lot of work. Just for some toxic paperweights though. Whatever let's discuss chemistry. Here's a game plan. First step. After physically extracting the battery guts I'll treat them with a highly alkaline solution. To convert any lead sulfate into lead oxides. Next step I'll dissolve the lead metal and lead oxides with acetic acid. Then I'll crystallize the resulting lead acetate to purify it some. Then we'll dissolve those crystals and add some sort of chloride to precipitate lead chloride. This will remove the antimony and other metals that are alloyed with the lead because they are soluble as chlorides and lead is not. This lead chloride will be pure enough for whatever I end up making with it, be it philosophers kidney stones or primary explosives. So let's do this. Here is a dead lead acid battery from my dead car battery collection. Here I'm drilling holes into the battery to drain out the sulfuric acid into this bucket, which will be my lead waste container for the rest of the project. I know there's a very good chance that LK99 is just like that cold fusion hubbub in the 90s. Just a bunch of badly done science with a lot of wishful thinking used as data. But that's okay. I can just make YBCO. YBCO is the highest temperature actually confirmed superconductor I can possibly make in my shitty garage workshop laboratory. Several people on YouTube have made it before. It does require liquid nitrogen temperatures to work, but liquid nitrogen isn't impossible to obtain, so one way or another I will have floating rocks, no matter what the true nature of LK99 is. Let's remove this plastic cover. This poor bastard will probably never need it again. Now I'ma try to cut this thing up with this saw. Alright, fuck, alright let's pry this off and access the shit on the inside. Look at all that leaded goodness, you know how much high octane petrol you could make with all that. Let me try to cut this loose with scissors, so I can pull it out. Let me try to yoink it out with pliers instead. Let me try scissors again. Let me try to chisel it. Fuck it, we saw. Alright let's check my pullout game. Fuck yeah. Check out these poison flaps. This is a real page turner. Okie dokie. I'ma get the rest.
Eeny meeny miny mo. Look at that lead mud at the bottom. 23 likes and I'll drink it with a straw. Now I got her actually do chemistry on this stuff. Let me get a bucket. I guess I have to tear this up by hand. Into the empty mayonnaise container it goes. For the other home chemists watching this, number one I recommend you don't watch this. Number two, I highly recommend collecting mayonnaise containers. If you don't work at a food establishment, that goes through mayo faster than gay Greeks go through olive oil, like I do. Perhaps you could start eating it out of the bucket like it's pudding. Though I suppose you could probably just eat pudding at that point and the containers would probably be the same plastic. I can't know for sure though. You better get a hold of a highly effective spoon either way. Shockingly I can't fit the entire car battery into the mayo container, so I will just save the rest for later. I'll probably just dispose of it in a highly responsible manner. Now let's water this so that it'll grow big and beautiful. Nor I'm joking, it's not going to grow, but it does need water. Because the battery was a dead one that was left to rot, all of the lead surfaces reacted with the sulfuric acid, so there's a lot of insoluble lead sulfate in the way of the lead metal, but I have an idea for how to deal with that. First let's get this mostly filled, this is just tap water by the way, I'll use distilled water when it actually matters so don't judge me. Here is a mason jar, please pretend it's a Pyrex beaker, I will get better equipment when I get better pay. Here is a punch cup of some sodium hydroxide, also known as lye, also known as caustic soda. If your soda is caustic you should not drink it, it's probably lost its carbonation, adding water to make a solution. Give it a swirl. Dump it. Little rinse. Now that I've added the lye solution the mayo water has gone highly alkaline. If your mayo has gone alkaline you should not drink it, it's probably lost its carbonation. The highly alkaline water should pull the sulfate ions from the lead sulfate, leaving lead oxides. This is based in poggers, because oxides are much easier to dissolve with acids than sulfates are. Now that most of the sulfate ions are dissolved in the water, I'm a precariously dump this into the waste bucket. Goodbye sulfate, rest in piss bozo, you won't be fucking missed. I gotta wash this lead a few times, to get all the sodium off of it, literally rinse and repeat. I'm using distilled water this time. Now that the battery guts are nice and clean, we are gonna destroy them with acid. You know I also destroyed your mother's guts last night. I'm going to use cleaning vinegar. Vinegar is just dilute acetic acid, so we should get lead acetate from the lead dissolving. Lead is quite unreactive and acetic acid is not a very strong acid. So to make the reaction go burr, we are gonna add hydrogen peroxide. I sure hope this highly toxic heavy metal solution doesn't start bubbling and foaming over when I add this dangerous oxidizer. That'd be crazy. Interesting. Fuck. Shit. God save the fucking queen. Okay I put the bucket in a bucket. I guess I have two lead waste buckets now. Look at that shit. Bitch looks like the elephant's foot in Chernobyl. I suppose that means at least some of it is getting oxidized. And dissolving into the acid. I left it to soak overnight. I don't know how much is dissolved, but I hope it's a lot. I'll dump it into this beaker, and then we can filter it to remove the gunk. Also, I'm getting bored of this song can we please change the music? Thank you. Back into the bucket with you. I'll top this off with more vinegar, so it can keep dissolving lead. Here is my vacuum filtration setup. Please pretend I have an electric vacuum pump. Now we pour the dirty lead acetate solution into the top of the thing and suck it through with a vacuum pump. 
I'll keep adding more as it pulls through. Look how clear it is now. Beautiful. Adding the last bit and pulling it through. Now I'll rinse this with a bit of vinegar to try and get as much lead out of the gunk as I can. Look at all the gunk we removed. Ugly as hell. Fuck get this fucking shit. Got them camera strap. Okay, now that it's filtered I'ma disconnect the hose, take off the thing, and dump it into a beaker. Check this mixologist technique. Perfect amount of room. Now this solution needs to be cooked down, and I'm not gonna cook it on my kitchen stove. So we are gonna use this propane camping stove instead. I'm gonna put aluminium foil betwixt the boiling flask and the stove to spread the heat and prevent the glass cracking. Here's my most prized possession, a 1000ml boiling flask. Look ma, I'm a real chemist with equipment. Haha, <laughs> now we funnel the stuff into the flask. Here is a refluxing column, it is shattered on one end because a cat knocked over an experiment I was doing, but it will work just fine for our purposes. Let's light this firecracker up, I'm adding the column to try to keep particles of lead salt from escaping. Look at that ominous glow. Look it's starting to boil. Look at that steam. I hope that's only water vapor, and nothing else is making its way up the tube. That glow is much more than ominous, it's straight up terrifying. I fucking hate chemistry. Okay so, I ran out of gas while the camera was off, so the next day I got more propane, and then, the day after that, I started the boiling process again. This time I left off the refluxing column and just put the whole setup far away from my garage. Light it up. Let it simmer. Okay, for some reason the propane burner started burning very fuel rich and producing a bunch of soot, but it doesn't matter, as long as it's still working I don't care. Let me just remove this guy's n word pass real quick. There, all clean. There's not very much solution left, because the water boiled off, so now this stuff is more concentrated, so I think we should get more from the mayo lead and boil that down too. First let's put this concentrated stuff in another beaker. It's a lot foggier than it was before. Let's see if a bit of vinegar will dissolve that fog. It did not. I guess we'll filter out whatever that dirt is after we get more solution boiled down. Last time I poured this mayo lead it spilled quite a bit. So before I pour it into the beaker this time I'm a cut a notch into it. Hopefully it'll help it flow more smoothly. Snip, snip. Let's try it now. Swag. That was much better. I'll be sure to circumcise all my mayo containers from now on. I'ma refill the vinegar every time I pour out any lead solution. You've already seen me filter the stuff before and this is going to basically be identical to that process. So I'ma just skip through it quickly. I grabbed more solution to filter. I put the clean solution into the boiling flask. And then I filter more solution. Now time to boil stuff down again. I don't know why, but around this point I got comfortable with heavy metal solutions actively boiling in open flasks in my immediate vicinity. So I just put this at the edge of my garage. Terrible idea. I filtered more solution and I'm added to the flask. Now that there's room. Leaving this to boil down more. 
Look at this. The first batch we concentrated actually crystallized. We actually dissolved more of the battery than I was expecting. This is fantastic news. Now that I know this works I'll add this to the newer batches. And we'll crystallize them all. Okay now we reach the part of the video where I do a big oopsie daisy. I filtered more solution to add. Just like I did before. But for some fucking reason. I couldn't be bothered to wait for the flask to cool down before I added it, so it fucking exploded. It sent toxic heavy metal salt bloody everywhere. If I start voting Republican or watching Joe Rogan you'll know the exact moment I got my brain destroyed. The boiling point of water gets higher the more salt you add, so the concentrated solution in the flask was hotter than the boiling point of the less concentrated solution that I added, hence the rapid foomph. I fucking hate physics, but since it going all Saint Helens on me actually cooled it down a lot, I might as well add the solution that I was trying to add. Okay so some time later, and the solution is boiled down enough, I'ma dump it into this first crystallized batch. The heat should re-dissolve the crystals. Never mind all the sodium bicarb on the floor, it's just there for decoration. Now I quickly do a hot filtration. That's where you do a filtration of your solution. While it is hot, I know that's unbelievable, but it is true. I want to filter it twice, so I gotta move quick before it cools down. If it gets too cold, while I'm filtering it, it could start to crystallize and clog the filter. Now that it's clean and super saturated, I'ma add it to this jar. and put a lid on it, sealing it all the way. Now I put it in the freezer for a few days and forget about the project. I eventually remember that I have frozen brain rotting salt in my kitchen and I start working on it again. Whole thing is crystallized, very crunchy. I've microwaved it to soften it some. Now we stab with knife. Judas Christ, that took forever. I rinsed it with some ice cold distilled water and I'll discard everything that pulled through. Now, after cleaning the flask, I'll pull through hot distilled water to dissolve the crystals. Now I have a solution of decently pure lead salt. But there's probably still some antimony in there. So let's see what we can do about that. Okay this part of the video is gonna get kinda confusing to watch. Or at least it's confusing to edit. First I'm a pour some ammonia solution. Then I pour out some hydrochloric acid. Ammonia is a base. Hydrochloric acid is an acid. So mixing them together should balance out the pH and make a solution of ammonium chloride. It tests a bit acidic but that's okay. I'm just trying to have the acidity low enough that it doesn't dissolve the lead chloride. I read on the internet that lead chloride is soluble in strong solutions of hydrochloric acid. Here I'm mixing the lead acetate solution and the ammonium chloride stuff. Lead chloride should drop out of solution because it's not very soluble in water. All that foggy stuff is the lead chloride precipitating. This fucking beaker isn't big enough, so I'll put this back in the flask. The flask isn't big enough neither. Fuck it, we are using both. So I tested the pH, and it looks damn near neutral, which makes sense, if you actually think about it, which I didn't. So I added more hydrochloric acid to see if more lead precipitates 
It did. So I added a bunch of acid to the smaller amount of solution until it tested very red. And it never seemed to dissolve any of the white fluff. So instead of using ammonium chloride I'ma just add hydrochloric acid until it stops making white lead salt. I shouldn't have been dicking around with ammonia at all. Please pretend I just used hydrochloric acid and didn't make a huge mess of my workbench. After adding the acid until it stopped precipitating more lead, it all settled to the bottom looking like cottage cheese. That right there is the final product we are after. Just gotta filter it out. So let's empty the flask out, so we can use it for filtering. Give it a rinse, and swish to get all the good stuff out. Now we filter the product. Sorry if it was confusing to watch me switch clear liquids back and forth between 5 glass jars only for me to determine that I was doing it wrong the whole time. If it's any consolation, I was pretty confused too. Maybe the lead is getting to me, or maybe I should label things, so you can visibly tell what they are. Whatever we figured it out in the end and I have more lead acetate set aside, so we can try it again the right way. Now I'ma shut the fuck up for a while and just let you watch me vacuum filter this. Alrighty, before I give the product a final rinse and call it done, I'ma convert this other lead solution into chloride and add it. So I grab some hydrochloric acid, I put the lead acetate solution into a bigger jar, sorry I mean beaker, and I add the acid. Bombs away. Now wasn't that so much easier, shoulda done that from the start. Shoulda coulda woulda, let me go dump out this waste to make room for the new stuff. Okay now I add the new lead chloride we just made to the filter. And we use distilled water to rinse out the last bit out of the beaker. I add distilled water to rinse the product. I added too much distilled water and I was worried about it dissolving too much of the lead. So I went to go pour out the filter. And... The lead just fell out. What the puck? Well, I guess there it is. The finished product in my hand. Purified and cleaned. Where da fuck do I put this? Here, lemme just balance it on top of this beaker. Perfect. K I got a proper drying dish to put it in. Let's peel the paper filter off the product. There's a lot sticking to it. Maybe I'll just wait till it all dries before I try to remove the paper. So anyway, that's how I made pure lead salts from an old car battery. I'm probably gonna make even more because I still have a bunch of battery guts steeping in vinegar. Let me know what I should make with it. Also let me know if you enjoyed the video. Maybe I'll make another in a few years. Yeah, that's about it. See ya.